Make sure, there we go. It is a good morning. It's good for us to be gathered here together today as, as we enjoy this wonderful moment to gather together in spite of what the weather might want us to believe. Um, it looks like we've even dodged that bullet. As we gather here this morning, if you haven't already done so, I invite you to take a moment to um, fill out your friendship pads, pass those down around the bend, across the gaps. Everybody has a chance to sign. And then as it comes back, you get to um, see who you're sharing the pew with. I learned last hour when I glanced down at the bulletin is that our little um, meditative paragraph about the, the morning visual somehow didn't make it onto the copy of the bulletin with that. So um, when you go to the mall and you walk through the door, there's always that big sign that says you are here and then it displays the big anchor stores and you have a chance then to begin to look to see how to go from where you are to where you want to be. Um, this is our mall sign this morning. Uh, for the kingdom of God, uh, starting out with you are here, and then we have some of the anchor stores out, so uh, the different ministries, uh, this, we didn't have enough space to do everything, but just some of the, the ones that are, especially this time of year, uh, there to let you know where you are relative to what is happening uh, around you in God's kingdom. So you can look at that and you can uh, muse upon that, uh, identify where you are and where it is that you feel God calling you to go, um, and you can use that roadmap to help you with that. Um, other announcements that we have this morning. Um, want to um, draw your attention to the announcement as far as um, our um, ministry spotlight, which is for the Christmas share. Um, and did we have any additional announcement? Last hour we had, and have you got something? We got four names left, uh, so immediately upon the conclusion of the worship hour, you are free to walk, not run, uh, to the Friendship Center. Where Are you going to be there, Megan? Megan will be there to help you sign up for the last four tickets. Uh, we get those four families taken care of, and we've got our whole bunch spoken for for this year. So four left. Uh, you can talk to Megan following the service in the Friendship Center. A reminder that on the September, September, in my dreams, in December 16th uh, is going to be at the 1030 service our Christmas program with that. They got some really neat stuff planned. Uh, you can come uh, at 1030 on the 16th and be able to enjoy that. Um, you have on your insert. No, that's Christmas share. Um, just a reminder about the alternative uh, gift mark uh, is now going to be open starting today. Uh, so if you want to sign up for some things there, uh, you can go shopping. Last hour, again, they were, they were offering this up. If you have somebody on your gift list who has everything and you can't figure out what's that one thing that they weren't expecting, the, the challenge was to bet you can find something in the alternative gift market that they don't have. Uh, so you could come and participate there. In the bulletin, um, they're sharing where the, the proceeds are going. It's the Heifer Project. It's the JPK Fund for the uh, Mental Health Consortium and Women at the Well uh, for this year. Um, reminder, if you're using the T-coil system, be sure to flip your hearing aid over to that, or you can let the one of the ushers know, and they'll help you get set up with one of the headsets. Insert-wise, we've got the special offering envelope. This is the last uh, Sunday of November. Traditionally, that's our United Methodist Student Day. Um, you can look through that to see what those, uh, those gifts are used for, and then you can give that some prayerful consideration and respond as you are led to go. Your pink one insert is to remind you about the poinsettias. We're just about upon the deadline uh, for placing that order with the, the florist, so if you're wanting to uh, contribute a poinsettia this year, it's time to get that filled out, drop it by either in the plate or drop it by the office. Uh, you already got the information about the Christmas share. On the back side of that uh, lime green insert is uh, uh, an invitation for anyone who feels uh, called and led to, to have part of the ministry of what our kitchen produces. Uh, we've had a couple folk who have given of themselves over a stretch of time to make sure our kitchen is always stocked and, and clean and in working order. Um, they are feeling some, some call and nudge to be involved in other areas of ministry than that. Uh, which leaves some openings. So if that's a, a ministry that you would be willing to be a part of, um, you can step forward, let us know, and we can help you get connected with that. Your other insert with the prayer concerns, you can hang on to, don't let it get too far, 
We'll be coming back to that a little bit later in the service. <sighs> Any other additions or corrections that we need to be aware of this morning? Then I invite you to stand at your table and greet each other your signs of Christian love. Well, good morning. You know, this Sunday is really dedicated to you. Do you feel special? Did you know that the United Methodist Church has designated this Sunday as Student Sunday? Let's center ourselves on being a student. We are all students to some degree. Sure, we think of the conventional student as an elementary, high school, or college but we really are all students. I'm going to list several tasks that you have had to do just to illustrate that you indeed are a student. Which button do I push to change this channel? How do I set the screens on the combine to get the cleanest corn? What is the best Medicare supplement for me? How do I put emojis on my text messages? And this one I like. How can I order a Big Mac without being a student to figure out that darn kiosk? You see, we are all students, but all students need a teacher. Otherwise, you can't be a student. Well, guess what? I'm going to be your teacher for this designated student day. Stay with me now because I need you to focus on this lesson. As your church treasurer, it's my responsibility to show you all the different ways to share your blessings with the church. It is that time of the year that we, re that we review 2018 and make some year-end decisions on how we can fund the program of the church. You can give cash, you can write a check, you can use a credit card on the iPads around the corner. You can sign up for ACH, which automatically withdraws a certain amount from your checking and deposits directly to the church's account. But now listen up, class. Please focus on some other unique ways of giving to the church. If you are a farmer, you can gift bushels of corn and beans to the church. I have set up an account in the name of Grinnell United Methodist Church at Key Co-op, and it's ready to be used. You don't have to declare the value of the grain as income, but you can still get a deduction as a gift. If you have stock that has gone up in value, gift it to the church and avoid paying capital gains, plus you get a tax deduction. If you are at least 70 and a half years old and have an IRA, you can transfer funds directly from your IRA to the church without paying income tax on it, plus it qualifies for uh, part of your RMD, which is required minimal distribution. You can even give money to the church's endowed fund, which is part of the Greater Plowsheet Community Foundation and get a state income tax credit in addition to a federal deduction. So, there is so much to learn. Now, I know I've tried to deliver a very serious message about church finance 
in maybe a kind of a lighthearted way. But be a student. Do your homework. Ask the teacher questions if needed. But by all means, decide what is best for your family. Let us pray. Dear Lord, on this Student Day Sunday, let us all be students of your teachings. May we use your guidebook, the Bible, you have provided us to advance and glorify your kingdom. Amen. Please stand if you are able for the call to worship. Let's enter God's dwelling place. Let's enter with thanksgiving and praise. Let's worship with the joy of the Lord. Let's worship with our words and our lives. Let's live in the household of God. Please join me in the opening hymn, Seek Ye First, in the Blue United Methodist Hymnal, page 405. You may be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer. Mighty God, when we confuse your rule in our lives with our personal power, forgive us. Guide us on paths of humility, remembering that your kingdom is not of this world. Guide us on paths of righteousness partnering with you to bring your kingdom to this world. Guide us on paths of thanksgiving, recognizing that your gifts and blessings enable us to walk in your ways, partner with you in creation, and love as you taught us to love, in trust of your powerful grace and your mighty love, we pray. Amen. Christ, who is both Alpha and Omega, mercy and grace, power and might, loves us and frees us from our sins, making us a kingdom of compassion and love to bring mercy and grace to this earth. And we have the praise team singing, How Great is Our God, and Here I Am to Worship. Um, while they're coming up here, I encourage you to sing along with us. It's in the green book or on the screens, starting on 3003.
The Gospel reading today is from John chapter 18, verses 33 to 37, and you can find it in your Pew Bibles on page 106 of the New Testament. Pilate is trying to figure out just who this Jesus is. He has been called a king by some. Is that true? If it is, just where is his kingdom? Pilate decides just to ask him. Instead of clarifying Pilate's confusion, Jesus' answer leads Pilate to yet more questions. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the gospel of the Lord. Service we whoa, first service we had none, but I see a couple of kids. Come on down. Hey, Nigel. Did everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah. Did everybody eat way too much? No, I did. Okay. So what is this? A crown. Who wears a crown usually? A king, right? So today, that's kind of what we're talking about is king. So I have a question for you. First, do you know what a king is or what a king does? A yeah, very good. What was that? Say. A person who rules a country. A person who rules a country, right? So how do you think someone becomes a king? When they do good stuff. Anybody have any other ideas? When they're brave, that could maybe did something brave. A lot of times what happens is you become a king through it being in a family. So like over in Europe, when there's a king, there's like, you might have King George I, II, III, 27, 37. It just kind of comes down the line. So that's how kings happen. So do we have a king here in the United States? No, right? Yeah, we have a president, right? So if we had a king, what do you think would happen? We'd have to follow the king, because what happens in these co countries? The king rules, right? So sometimes maybe a king might make us do things like we wouldn't want to do. Like what if the king ruled that every night we had to eat Brussels sprouts for dinner? Ooh, would we like that? <laughs> and for breakfast and lunch? That wouldn't be very good, were we? And even if lots of people didn't want to have this king, we'd still have to have this king, right? But even if they couldn't make us eat vegetables every night for dinner, that wouldn't be very cool, would it? So, did you hear the scripture reading that they just read? It was talking about Jesus was talking to um, Pilate, right? But he's a little confused because Pilate thinks Jesus is a king like what we just talked about, that Jesus is going to come in and tell you to eat Brussels sprouts. Is Jesus going to tell you to eat Brussels sprouts? No. And uh, he's trying to become king of Israel. But he tells, Je he tells him that he's not that kind of king. So does anyone have an idea what kind of king Jesus is? No. Want, well, you want to know what, how, what kind of king is Jesus? Um, like one that is like the like one that's really old. He's really old. Yeah, he could be really old, but is he probably a good king? Because the first king I talked about, we have to follow his rules, right? If he tells us to do something, we have to. But Jesus isn't that type of king. He wants us to follow him, but he doesn't make us, right? 
and he also he wants us to choose so we don't have to make jesus king of our life but he wants us to choose that right and he's also a teacher so he wants us to receive god's love forgiveness and healing and jesus by jesus but jesus isn't going to make us do that but he wants us to do that right so that's how jesus is different than the king that Pilate kind of thinks that he's trying to be so can we say a prayer repeat after mary dear god thank you for jesus who is the best king ever because he shows us how to receive your gifts and then share those gifts with others and all of us said amen It is the last Sunday of the church year when we celebrate Christ's kingship. So if you have a king, that implies you also have a kingdom. The two kind of sort of go together, which means if we're going to take this as a day to celebrate Christ as king, we're also going to take this as a day to celebrate Christ's kingdom. So if Christ is king and has a kingdom, where is it? was Pilate's question, or at least one of Pilate's questions. Now, we're all familiar with the line from, from the Field of Dreams movie, is this heaven? No, it's, it's Iowa. So is this the kingdom of heaven? No, it's, well, if you looked outside today, you might not think that maybe this is the image of that perfect kingdom of, of God, you know, with those rolling green pasture hills, the flowers, the trees, all the animals peaceably coexisting. It doesn't quite fit that stereotype as I look out the window to the outside. Uh, in fact, it looks more like a frozen wasteland out there. And if, in fact, someplace there is a lion laying with the lamb, it's for warmth today. So if it isn't here, if that kingdom isn't here, where is it? Pilate was really interested in that question because he was trying to measure the potential threat that was facing him. Was this man before him actually a contender to the throne? Was he a real challenge to Pilate's own rule? Or was the threat standing before him at this point the civil unrest that this man and those who opposed him were capable of unleashing on Pilate's kingdom? Well, we're asking the same question where is this kingdom of yours? But most likely we're asking the question for a different reason than Pilate, though we may find in Christ's answer that we're challenged just as deeply as Pilate was. You see, most of us are seeking that kingdom of God for relief from, from the struggles of life, from the, the pains that the world has visited upon us, for the injustices that we are witness to and subjected to. And when we seek for the kingdom, we're looking for for that hope that there's going to be a restoration of, of creation to back to a right relationship with God. And we read we're both in Isaiah and the book of Revelation uh, that this restoration is being promised and it's going to be so radical that it's going to look like something completely new to us. And we read through Jesus' own words and, and when he does use that phrase, the kingdom of heaven, he using it in a way as, as summarizing everything he has taught his disciples and those who follow him about what it means to be in that right relationship with God. This kingdom of heaven is that manifestation of the wholeness that comes from living your life in that presence of God. But maybe what that means is that this kingdom of heaven is not really a place, but a way of being. And getting there is not so much a matter of making all the right travel arrangements as it is a process of becoming. There's an old story about a king in a faraway distant land like most kings are in stories. This king was, was from a land far, far away, but it was a rich kingdom that he, that he ruled over. It met all of his needs. It had every bit of resources that his desires could ever require. And, and everybody in the royal court took good care of him. 
Everybody that was under his rule just loved him for his wisdom and for his fairness. And it seemed like he had everything that anybody in his position could ever dream of, could ever want. And he did, except for one thing. He didn't have an heir to gift all of this wonder to. And so he thought of a way that he could overcome that. He came up with a plan. He would invite all of the young people of the kingdom to come to the castle. And there they would be interviewed for the job of being his heir. He, they would become either his adopted prince or adopted princess. And so he sent out the word to the whole world of his kingdom and invited them, and he waited. The word traveled. It traveled all the way out until it finally reached one tiny, very remote village. And one of the young men in that village heard this, and as he was struggling just to get from day to day, he got excited about the prospect that if, if the king were to adopt him, all of this would go away and life would be good. He was a smart young guy. He was also a very hard worker with a good work ethic, and he quickly realized that he did not have the resources to make the long journey to the castle. He didn't have anything to wear if he did get there that would be appropriate to come into the presence of the king. And so he worked and he scrimped and he saved every little penny he could until he finally was able to secure the supplies he needed for the journey and to buy one new, brand new set of clothes that he would wait and put on when he got to the castle and came into the presence of the king. He made the long journey. He finally got there. And as he was approaching the gates to the castle there, excited about the fact he actually made it here, he noticed as he got to the gate, there was this dirty, filthy old beggar sitting by the gate in the dust of the road. He found he couldn't just walk past him. He knew what it was like to be without. He knew what it was like to live a life that nobody noticed or remembered. And as he got even with the, with the man sitting there, he stopped. And the old man looked up and he said, Son, have mercy on me. The young man stood there for a minute. He took out and he gave those new clothes. He gave them to the beggar to have something to wear rather than the rags that he was dressed in. And then he reached into his pocket and he took out the money that was left, the money that was going to pay for his way home, and he gave that to the beggar as well. That beggar was just overjoyed at the generosity. He now had clothes to wear. He had, he had money to buy food with. And he kept thanking the young man who went on through the gate thinking, well, I have no way to get home. I've got nothing suitable to wear. But what the hey, I've come this far. I might as well go get interviewed. So he went into the palace. And as he was escorted through the palace all the way to the throne room, he was standing through before those, those massive doors waiting for the guards to open it. And when they threw those big doors open and he stepped through, to his utter amazement, sitting there on the throne was the beggar wearing the new clothes the young man had given him. He had no idea his interview happened at the gates, not in the throne room. He had no idea that when he took time to show the kindness to that beggar. He was showing the king the type of person he was. The kingdom didn't reside in the throne room. It resided there on the edge of the road outside the gates. The king looked at the shocked young man, smiled from ear to ear, extended his arms and said, Welcome, my son. Where is this kingdom? This kingdom that Jesus refers to, that Pilate is still trying to figure out, is it here, is it there, is it somewhere else? Where is this kingdom? It's as close as the person next to you, whose life you can reach out and touch. It's as close as the life of the stranger you meet along the way, someone who appears to be forgotten, ignored, set aside. It's so close. And yet, it's so far that many won't make that journey. After Jesus' resurrection, the disciples, when they spoke of, of the kingdom's images that Jesus had used, 
They use languages like eternal life, salvation, forgiveness, and a, and a host of other themes. For them to, to speak of the kingdom meant you were in that right relationship with God and that's what salvation was all about. As we talk about what it means for us to actually find that kingdom, to make the journey, to find ourselves stepping through, it's a, a matter of receiving God's gift of grace in such a way that it shapes the lives that we live. It's both a now, an almost, and a not yet. The kingdom, as the Apostle Paul put it, is that righteousness and peace and joy that the Holy Spirit brings. We have a king who didn't exercise his rule from a distant throne room. Rather, he made it a reality for people by entering into their lives with grace, and then he invited them to do likewise. They weren't to go and build the kingdom. That was God's work. God's, God's Holy Spirit would worry about the unfolding of the kingdom, but having experienced it, their invitation was to make that presence of God's kingdom real in the lives of the people they met, to share the love, the grace, the mercy. They were to share that reality of what it is that God is doing in this world. And they were to do that by making the kingdom their priority, seek it with all that they do. They were to repent and to believe the good news that the kingdom actually is here and that they could enter into it like children. They were to pray for the rule of God to come now, and they were to be ready for that kingdom when it arrives as it's here. We can spend a lot of time standing before maps, whether it's in the mall or somewhere else, staring at the directions there, trying to figure out where it is we need to go to find what we're looking for. We can spend the rest of our lives looking for those streets of gold and those palaces of ivory that would seem to indicate this must be where God is at. We can anxiously wait somehow for, for that spirit of God just to change the world. We can wait and watch for our champion to come riding into our lives to, to vanquish all that makes life difficult, all that quashes our dreams. Or we can look into the eyes of those around us and we can see there both the need and the reality of our God's presence. We can look in their eyes and realize ours are the hands that are meant to feed, that ours are the voices that carry the words to comfort, that ours are the arms to hold and to shield, and ours are the lives to give witness to God's kingdom here. It is here, and like the mall sign that directs you to where you need to go by first telling you where you are, Christ's love for us says you are here in the midst of God's kingdom and you are now free to live lives as a light to the world. So go and live that life and bring forth the reality of that kingdom of God. I invite you to stand as you're able that we can join together in hymn number 2190.
You may be seated. As we gather here this morning, we gather as, as a part of God's people. But just as importantly, we gather as folk in need of prayer. Some of those prayers are that joyful proclamation that in this moment, in my life, in my experiences, you all need to know God is here and it is good. We also gather because some of the prayers we need to share today are the needs to hear that affirmation in the midst of my pain, my struggle, my wonderments. I need someone to affirm God is here. As we gather this morning, we gather in need of prayer, both of joys and of cares. Are there requests for prayer in the place? Yes, Megan. I'm sorry. For the family in Montezuma, who lost a six-year-old. first responders and staff who cared for them. Okay, thank you both. Are there other requests for prayer this morning? Yes, Clay. Okay, for those in the migrant caravan and all the needs that have brought them thus far and that they're going to face. Thank you. Are there others? Yes, thank you, Janet. Okay, okay, thank you. So prayers for Trish Eber, who is back in the hospital. Are there others? Yes, Donna. For those who are traveling today, um, traveling mercies and safety. Yeah. So we also lift up prayers for the family of Sandy Coco who, who died, that uh, they might find the comfort they need. Thank you. Are there others? For those of you who weren't aware, um, on last Monday, my sister had four discs removed that had de de degenerated to the point that the cervical spine was no longer stable. Uh, and they then did uh, put some spacers in and then did some work to try to convince those vertebrae to fuse. Uh, the surgery itself went very well with that. Uh, and the first day after, um, though painful, is went well. She's passing all the tests. The, the prayers, not only for the healing, the real prayers she's going to need is for the patients. Um, and she's going to be wearing that, that neck brace for a minimum of, of about three months. And for someone who's used to going and doing uh, and caring for others to be down that long, pray for her, pray for her daughter who is caring for her um, with that. So thank you for lifting that up. Are there others? That's perhaps, oh, yes. Wednesday. Okay, prayers for McLean with his heart procedure on Wednesday. Thank you, Karen. Are there others? Then let us pray. Gracious Lord, we do thank you for your presence in our lives and in this world. We thank you for those you send into our lives to help us be aware of just how near your kingdom is and where we stand in the midst of it. 
We give our thanks for those who have received your gifts in such a way that they, they offer them into the lives of others to, to make that, that difference. Um, we join uh, giving our thanks for my sister's uh, uh, successful surgery and for all of the medical team that made that possible. Um, we thank you also for your gift of love um, that fills our lives in such a way that we can share it. And, and we celebrate with Brent and Teresa Wells in celebrating their 41 years of, of marriage. We give our thanks for the, the gift of our time with family over these holidays, and we join with celebrating the Packards from last hour with their, with their family time, but also for all of those uh, who have had that joy. We pray for our thanks to you for those who have heard your invitations to, to pick up um, their, their blessings in such a way that they are willing to share them, that others might also be welcomed into, into the reality that they are in the midst of your kingdom. We give our thanks for all of those in the Stephen ministry, for, for the work of the Trinity United Methodist Church, for women at the well, for the ministry of Crossroads, and, and we pray uh, your blessings upon Larry Keese with his work at the Africa University in Zimbabwe. Lord, as we are aware of the weather this day and, and the fact that this is the day that many, many will be traveling from their family gatherings back to their respective homes, we pray that you watch over those byways and highways and, and grant safe traveling mercies to, to all. We are aware that there are those who are dealing with, with those challenges in life. So for all of those who are dealing with, with those moments and difficult transitions, we, we pray that your, your blessings be with them. And we lift up Linda Davis and uh, her, her daughter, Natasha, and her granddaughters, Americas and Cheyenne. We pray for all of those who are dealing with the aftermaths um, of hurricanes and typhoons and fires this ho holiday season. We pray that you keep them safe and, and all of those who are responding to their needs be kept safe as well. And Lord, we, we lift up all of those in, in the migrant caravan and we pray for their safety uh, as they deal with, with not only their current moment, but all the, the challenges and difficulties that put them on that road in the first place. Lord, we pray for, for a neighbor who's been hospitalized. We lift up uh, McLean with his upcoming heart procedure on Wednesday. Uh, we lift up Trish Ebert as she deals once again with, with her health needs that have resulted in, a, in yet another hospitalization. Along with the ones that we've named, we, we lift up all of those that we have listed this morning, uh, and we pray that your healing touch be with them all in such a way that they can experience that wholeness uh, that comes with, with your presence in their lives. And Lord, we are also aware that uh, there are those, even in this holiday season, uh, who are going through times of loss and, and grief. We lift up the family of Sandy Tokel, and we pray that your, your, your presence will be with them in such a way that their hearts can be comforted in their time of loss and sorrow. We hold up the family from Montezuma who lost their, their six-year-old. We pray, too, that, that their hearts might be comforting uh, and they might find the peace that, that they need from you. We also hold up all of the, the responders and, and the medical staff that dealt with the, with the family that through that, that time of loss that they too might feel your healing presence. Um, we pray for the United Methodist Church, for our commission on the way forward, our council of bishops, our delegates to the special general conference, that as they work together to discern what it means for, for us as, as a denomination to go forth in the world as a message of love and grace that we be guided by your spirit in that discernment. We pray for our Bishop Lori Holler and our District Superintendent, uh, Reverend He Chan John. We ask your blessings upon both of them as they offer themselves to, to ministries uh, of this district conference and, and the world beyond. We offer our prayers and we ask for your blessings upon those who are responding to the mental health needs of this community. For all of those in the mental health consortium, for other providers, for, for friends, family, community members, uh, bless their, their work uh, to address this, this community need. We are aware, Lord, that there are those who have long-term needs in life. We pray that they not only have the strength for those days, but also the courage to rest upon you through them. We lift before you this morning Peyton and Hunter and Jake. And Lord, we do ask that wherever there is conflict and strife in this world, whether it be within a family, between friends, within a community, between nations, that in any of those places, your peace would manifest itself. We pray for those displaced as refugees and immigrants, that they might find the safe sanctuaries that they are in need of. 
And Lord, for all of those whose lives have been touched by violence or terrorism, we pray that as they pick up the pieces and rebuild, that they do so upon a firm foundation of your love, grace, and mercy. We pray for all of these things, as well as those things we hold upon our hearts, as we praise your Son, our Lord and Savior, God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as the ushers wait upon us, we are reminded that this is an opportunity not only to, just to give our gifts, but to give our very selves to the work of God's kingdom. Let us pray together. Ruler of creation, through our gifts this day, bring your reign of love and compassion here on earth. Bless these gifts of thanksgiving and praise, that they may have a reason for gratitude and joy. In your mighty love we pray. Amen.
And now as we prepare to leave these rooms to whatever waits for us beyond these doors, as we follow that light of Christ from this moment into what is next, we go. We go with the boldness of knowing that we go in the power of Christ's name. When you leave here, leave here boldly enough that when the world looks upon you, it knows that God's love has wrapped itself around both you and them. Leave here so boldly that when the world watches you, there is no doubt that Christ walks with you and with them. When you leave here, go boldly enough that when the world looks upon you, it knows that it is God's Spirit that fills you, sustains you, and that same Spirit is with them as well. Go from here boldly to be that living witness that God's kingdom is here.